in the 41st chapter of Genesis, Genesis in the beginning. As it was in the beginning, so it shall be at the end. If you do not understand the beginning, you're never going to understand the end. We have come to this place where Joseph um, has um, been sold by his brothers in to some Ishmaelites, and they in turn sold him to some Egyptians. And now with the gift of God, be giving him the power of interpretation, prophecy, and so forth, knowing the future. He has worked himself up to where he is head of all Egypt right under Pharaoh. And uh, having interpreted for Pharaoh that he was going to have seven rich years and then seven really poor ones. And Pharaoh put Joseph, a little Hebrew boy, who would be about 30 years old at this time, in charge of the whole nation in building granaries and preserving uh, grain, whereby there would be plenty for everyone. So we pick it up there then again, where he has been given a wife from one of the shepherd king's daughters, because he was a priest um, uh, there of, um, of On, and um, being the place of the shepherd kings, which means of the children of Israel that raised sheep in Egypt in the southern part. So with that having been said, chapter 41, verse 50, a word of wisdom from our father, verse 50 reads, And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which um, Azanath, that would his wife, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bear unto him. And both of these lads um, being blessed by God as well, the sons of Joseph, 51. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God, said he, had made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. Uh, and, and that's what Manasseh means, is forgetful. In verse 52, in the name of the second called he Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And, and that's what Ephraim means, being fruitful. And many people believe that between these two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, makes up Great Britain and America today. Uh, is that a fact? Well, as you will find in chapter 48 and 9, one was to be a kingdom of nations, which Britain was, and the other would be very fruitful in a superpower of superpowers. So it kind of fits. There are really no accidents with our Father's plan. And verse 53, And the seven years of plenteous, plentiness that was in the land of Egypt was ended. We come here to the year 1708 B.C., that's when, that's when the mean years began. They would go for seven years, which would take you to the year 1700 B.C. This has been found and proven because of the Great Famine that is written in archaeological finds in both um, the uh, Egyptian hieroglyphs and as well as others, another stone. Verse 54. In the seven years of drought, began to come, according as Joseph had said, and the drought was in all the lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. Why? Because he had stored it. He had stashed it in that land of plenty, a uh, time of plentiness, uh, verse 55. You see, when, when you follow God's command, you're going to do just fine. You can always rest assured, be comfortable with that. 55, and when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread, and Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph. He saith to you, Do. And so again, here we have, with the intervention of God, we have this young lad, with God's blessings, he's, he's controlling basically the food supply as well as governing in the land of Egypt. Uh, here we have a type of savior. In other words, he saved lives by feeding them when many would have starved had it not been for him, which is, gives you a type 
of the true Son of God that would come that saved souls by their faith in and upon him and believing upon him and he brings eternal life saving souls uh, so uh, always learn from the types as it is written in first corinthians chapter 10 verse 10 these things happened as an example so that you would know what would befall us in the end times that's why you want to pay attention verse 56 and the famine was over all the face of the earth and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt and everywhere else as far as that's concerned verse 57 and all countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn because that the famine was so sore in all lands and so it was so here uh, again, here this lad at 17 was sold, betrayed by his brothers. They wanted to kill him. Some of them did. Because he had had this dream that they would all bow to him. And his father, being the favorite of his father, uh, Jacob, he gave him the coat of many colors, which means the firstborn and the inheritor of all the blessings, basically. They were jealous of him, all, uh, all uh, 11 of them were. But the elder, of course, talked them out of killing him, and they sold him. So here, what you're about to see is those brothers coming to Egypt to buy grain, and unbeknownst to them, they're going to be buying it from the little brother that some of them wanted to kill and others sold into slavery. Kind of a bad situation for the 11, for the, the uh, 10 that would come to buy grain because Jacob's not going to let Benjamin, that's Joseph's full blood brother by, by the mother Rachel, out of his sight because he's already lost Joseph. Does the father Jacob know he lost Joseph because of the rest of the brothers? So as we look into it then, here we have those brothers coming to the one they sold. Verse 42. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob sent, said unto his sons, Why do you look one upon another? Why are you just standing around looking at each other, starving to death? Why don't you do something? That's a Hebraism, too. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. We don't want to starve to death here. And it, it was that bad. Verse 3. And Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. Again, why would there just be ten? Because jo Jacob is not going to let little Benjamin out of his sight. He's going to hang on to him. It broke his heart when Joseph was that coat of many colors come in with blood all over it, and they thought an animal had torn him up and destroyed him. Three, uh, when we got that, verse four to continue. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob, sent not Jacob sent not with his brethren for he said lest lest peradventure mischief befall him in other words this was the Rachel was his favorite wife okay she was the one that he had worked so hard for and was through trickery uh, Leah was put in her place but uh, uh, he did have these two sons but little old Benjamin would be the one that would even bring the death of Rachel at childbirth. And Rachel would name him Ben-Ani, which is to say son of my sorrow in the Hebrew tongue. But Jacob would call him Benjamin, which is to say son of my right hand. Verse 5. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. It was bad. Verse 6. And Joseph was governor over the land. And he it was that sold to all the people of the land. 
And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. This was the dream that Joseph had as a 17-year-old lad. He said, I dreamed that uh, all came and bowed before me. And this made them jealous. They didn't like that, but it's coming to pass right now. Verse 7, And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them. He didn't make himself known. And he spake roughly unto them. Whence came ye? Which come, whence came ye? Come you? And they said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. In other words, he, he's got a reason. He still loves them. But he's got a reason to rough them up a little bit to cause them to worry. You see, they, they actually have their lives in his hand right now. Verse 8. And Joseph knew his brethren, and they knew not him. Nine. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them, and said unto them, Ye are spies, to seek the nakedness of the land you are come. You come to see how this famine has affected it. He knows who they are, and he knows this is not the reason they're there. But he's got a little revenge coming. He's got a right to shake them up a little bit, because they're the ones that some of them even wanted to kill him, because they were so jealous of him. Verse 10, And they said unto him, Nay, my Lord, but to buy food are thy servants come. Verse 11, We are all one man's sons. We are true men, thy servants are no spies. Verse 12, and he said unto them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. He, he can see the weakness there, and he's taking advantage of it. He's, he's bearing down. And he has a right to. 13. And they said, Thy servants are twelve brethren, sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and one is not. The one that supposedly is not is standing before them. They don't know it. The one they threw in, in a, a cistern, threatening to kill him and then selling him, they had to frighten him some. And I'm sure he was begging his brothers. Time to kind of get a little payday here. 14. And Joseph said unto them, That... <clears throat> that... Um, is it that I spake unto you, saying you are spies? That's what I said. 15. Hereby you shall be proved. I'm going to test you out. By the life of Pharaoh, you shall not go forth hence, except your youngest brother come hither. That was his only full-blood brother, was little Benjamin. And, and I suppose Joseph, is, he wants to find out, would they sell his brother? Would they sell one of themselves like they sold him? He wants to know. See, send one of you and let him fetch your brother and you shall be kept in prison. That your words may be proved whether there be any truth in you. Or else by the life of Pharaoh surely ye are spies. This is getting pretty serious on the ten. 17. And he put them all together into ward three days. He locked them up. 18. And Joseph said unto them the third day, This do and live, for I fear God. In other words, you, you do what I'm about to say. And because I, because I love the Lord, um, um, I'm going to do this. 19. If you be true men... Let one of your brethren be bound in the house of your prison. Go ye carry corn for the famine of your houses. But bring your youngest brother unto me. So shall your words be verified, and you shall not die. And they did so. 
But here, they're having to leave, they must leave one bound in that prison. He still kind of wants to know, are they going to sell him? Will they not come back? I want to know. 21. And they said one to another, We are very guilty concerning our brother in that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us, when he begged us not to kill him, when he begged us not to sell him. I'm talking about Joseph. And we would not hear, therefore is this distress come upon us. And actually, it was more true than they might have thought. Because the one they sold and the one they threatened to kill, he's the big boss here. 22. And Reuben answered them, saying, Spake I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child, and you would not hear. Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. It was Reuben that saved his life by uh, selling him rather than killing him. 23. And they knew not that Joseph understood them, for he spake unto them by an interpreter. In other words, they spoke in the Hebrew tongue, and naturally Joseph could speak in, in, in the Egyptian tongue or the Hebrew tongue. And by using an interpreter to keep his identity hidden from his brothers, uh, they didn't recognize the fact that he could understand every word they said. And they're talking about him. So why didn't we listen to him when he was begging us? I'm sure this touched his heart. It had to break him up pretty good because he still loved his brothers. And to hear them say in this way, verse 23, and they knew not that Joseph understood them. Next, next verse, please, 24. And he turned himself about from them and wept. It got to him. They cared about him and returned to them again, and communed with them, and took from them Simeon, and bound him before their eyes. He's going to find out. Will they leave him here in this dungeon to die like they did me in the, hole, the pit? Five. And then Joseph commanded to fill their sacks with corn, and to restore every man's money into his sack, and to give them provision for the way, and thus did he unto them. I mean, he didn't charge them anything for the corn, but see, this also is going to cause uh, anxiety. It's going to make them look like a bunch of thieves, because their money was still in the sack. They didn't pay. 26. And they laden their asses with the corn and departed thence. 27, and as one of them opened his sack to give his ass provender in the, in the inn, he spied his money, for behold, it was in his sack's mouth. And this would shake him up pretty good. 28, and he said unto his brethren, My money is restored, and lo, it is even in my sack, and their heart failed them, and they were afraid, saying one to another, What is this that God hath done unto us? He's made us look like a bunch of thieves. Nine. And they came unto Jacob their father, unto the land of Canaan, and told him all that befell uh, unto them, saying, verse 30, The man who is the Lord of the land, this would be Joseph, Poor old Jacob doesn't know it, neither do they. Spake roughly to us. Took us for spies of the country. And naturally Joseph's purpose was to shake them up a little bit. They had it coming. 31. And we said unto him, we, we're true men. We're no spies. Verse 32. We be twelve brethren, sons of our father. One is not, and the youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. And this would be Joseph, uh, Jacob's favorite, left. 33, and the man, the Lord of the country, said unto us, Hereby shall I know that ye are true men, 
Leave one of your brethren here with me and take food for the famine of your households and be gone. I'm going to test you out. See if you'll keep your word. 34, and bring your youngest brother unto me. Then shall I know that you are no spies, but that you are true men. So will I deliver you, your brother, and you shall traffic in the land. You, you'll be free to trade and do whatever you want to here. But um, I'll know you're telling me the truth. But he, he wants to see his full-blood brother. He wants to see little Benjamin. I guess he wants to know uh, also would um, would they sell Simon to them, Simeon rather? Would he would they give him up like they had Joseph? Thirty five. And it came to pass as they emptied their sacks that behold every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when both they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And they had a right to be, because they've still got one brother that's held in prison there. 36, And Jacob their father said unto them, Me have you bereaved of my children. Joseph is not. And Simeon is not. And ye will take Benjamin away? All these things are against me. It, it will kill me. I can't handle it. Verse 37. And Reuben spake unto him, uh, spake unto his father, saying, Slay my two sons, if I bring him not to thee. Deliver him into my hand, and I will bring him to thee again. And he's giving his own two sons. Reuben is. 38. And he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, that be Joseph. And he is left alone. If mischief befall him by the way into which you go, then shall you bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. Meaning, it'll kill me. I, I can't handle it. it. It will take me straight to the grave if I lose Benjamin after having lost Joseph and now as Simeon. And Reuben is pretty sure, for some reason, he knew that Joseph meant what he said. That if they would do as he said, that they, they would be free to traffic in the land. And uh, he, he, would, he took him at his word uh, that it was an honest saying. And so it is that um, Jacob's going to be stubborn. He's not turning loose at this time. Chapter 43, verse 1. And the famine was sore in the land. It did not ease up. She was seven years long. And it came to pass, when they had eaten up the corn which they had brought out of Egypt, their father said to them, Go again and buy us a little food. It seemed he didn't understand the severity of this. Three, and Judah spake unto him, saying, the man did solemnly protest unto us, saying, Ye shall not see my face except your brother be with you. If we don't have Benjamin with us, we're going nowhere. He's, that man in Egypt, which was Joseph, will not see us. We won't have anything. We'll starve. If thou wilt send our brother with us, we will go down and buy thee food. We'll, we'll produce. Verse 5, But if thou wilt not send him, we will not go down. For the man said unto us, You shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. You know what? This, this, is, a, this is a saying which means, You're not going to see me in peace. There's going to be big trouble. You don't bring him... Uh, there's going to be some bloodshed here. That's what it means. And they took him at his word, six. And Israel said, Wherefore dealt ye so ill with me as to tell the man whether ye had yet a brother? Why, why did you tell him there was twelve of you? Why did you have to do that? Seven. And they said, 
The man asked us straightly of our state and of our kindred, saying, Is your father yet alive? Have you another brother? And we told him according to the tenor of these words, could we certainly know that he would say, bring your brother down? There was no way we could have known that. They didn't know it was Joseph they were talking to. They didn't know that Benjamin was his uh, full-blood brother. They were only half-brothers. Verse 8. And Judah said unto Israel his father, this be Jacob, Send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we, thou, and also our little ones. If we don't go, if we don't get more food, all of us are going to die. Not only you, the children, all of us. Well, we're going to starve to death. Verse 9. I will be surety for him. Of my hand shalt thou require him. If I bring him not unto thee, and set him before thee, then let me bear the blame forever, for the eternity. Except we had lingered, surely now we had returned this second time. We should have been back down there a long time ago. We've lingered and put this off till poor old Simeon, he's still locked up down there. Verse 11, And their father Israel, this be Jacob, said unto them, If it must be so now, do this. Take of the best fruits in the land in your vessels, and carry down the man a present, a little balm, and a little honey, spices and myrrh, nuts and almonds. Now th this was something, because it, it was, there was a drought on. They had hardly anything. And, and to wrap up a gift like this, that took some doing for them. Twelve. And take double money in your hand, and the money that was brought again in the mouth of your sacks, carry it again in your hand. Peradventure, it was an oversight. Now, don't take any chances. Do it right. And you know, and he was pretty wise in bringing this forth, and so it is. Thirteen. Take also your brother and arise and go again into the man. You can take little Benjamin. 14. And God Almighty give you mercy before the man that he may send away your other brother and Benjamin. If I be bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. That's the way it is. That's the way you might say that's the way the old cookie crumbles. That's the way it's going to be. 15. And the men took that present, and they took double money in their hand, and Benjamin, and rose up and went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. Here they are, back again. And there Joseph is seen. seen and when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the ruler of his house, Bring these men home. And slay and make ready, for these men shall dine with me at noon. Now this is going to be highly unusual. Here they are of another country. They've come in to buy grain. They got a brother in prison. And they got little old Benjamin with them. And this guy is going to wine and dine them in his home next to Pharaoh? He's going to kill us all. I mean, you could imagine what was going through there. He's setting us up. He's going to kill every one of us. 17. And the men did as Joseph bade, and the man brought the men into Joseph's house. 18. And the men were afraid. They had a right to be. Because they were brought into Joseph's house. They said, because of the money that was returned in our sacks at the first time, or we brought in, that he may seek occasion against us and fall upon us and take us for bondmen and our asses. He's going to clean us out. Don't tell him what he's going to do to us. 
I mean, taking him down to the big house, big luncheon, big dinner. I mean, everything is, this, you would only do this for royalty. What's he going to do to us? They still don't know it's their own brother. 19. And they came near to the steward of Joseph's house, and they communed with him at the door of the house. They're going to do some fast talking here. It's time. 20. And he said, Oh, sir, we came indeed down at the first time to buy food. We, we were innocent. We came down here. 21. And it came to pass when we came to the end that we opened our sacks. And behold, every man's money was in the mouth of his sack. Our money is full weight, and we have brought it again in our hand. Don't do anything to us. We're not thieves. We, we got it right here. They're, they're trying to find a reason. And naturally, they are guilty of what? They are guilty of having sold their brother into slavery. But at the same time, Almighty God sitting on the throne knows this famine was coming. And had they not sold little old Joseph into slavery, he would not have been taken, he would not have taken Egypt over whereby he could survive, not only help them, but help the Egyptians also to bring salvation to all people in that area. God loves his children. And God protects his children. So, uh, though it may seem strange, if you believe in God, then have faith to trust him. When you've done your best, when you've used your best, know that God is on the throne. And if you're one of his elect, you've got nothing to fear.